Dear listeners, I have been asked to say a few words related to a 2003 paper, The Small RNA Profile During Drosophila Melanogaster Development. It was a collaborative study between our experimental laboratory and Terry Gasterland's computational biology laboratory uh, participating in sequence annotation. By the year 2000, it became increasingly apparent that double-stranded RNA is an important trigger of gene silencing in animals and plants, and many genes existed that expressed small double-stranded RNA known as microRNAs. Evidence was also emerging that double-stranded RNA triggered heterochromatin formation in some species. My laboratory studied the biochemical mechanisms involved in RNA silencing, and we had just developed methods for isolation and sequencing of these small regulatory RNAs. Our study in Drosophila melanogaster was initiated by Alexei Aravin, who during his PhD thesis in the laboratory of Vladimir Gvostev in Moscow, identified small RNAs arising from the suppressor stellate locus. The suppressor stellate locus is composed of non-coding tandem repeats with homology to the stellate gene. Transcription of the suppressor stellate locus was required for lowering the expression of the stellate gene, which otherwise would crystallize in fly testes and cause infertility. We paired Alexei's interest to identify suppressor stellate small RNA sequences from testes with a more global analysis of small RNAs in Drosophila embryos, larvae, pupae, and adult, applying our recently developed small RNA cloning approach. We sequenced a total of 4,000 reads long before the introduction of the revolutionary deep sequencing technology a few years later. In retrospect, it is surprising how much new information we were able to obtain from these small number of reads. We discovered that many reads matched to single loci short inverted repeats and represented new microRNAs. We studied their regulation as function of development and showed that cystronically organized microns were co-expressed. We also found a set of slightly longer small RNAs, including sequences from the suppressor stellate locus. Their size distribution was distinct from microRNAs, around 26 nucleotide in size, and had a strong bias for 5' uridin. These RNAs also map to multiple positions in the genome in genes known to correspond to transposons or were organized in tandem arrays like the suppressor stellate region. Because of these distinct size characteristics and the property of simultaneously mapping to repetitive genomic sites, we call these RNAs repeat-associated siRNAs. As it turned out later, these longer class RNAs were not bound to argonaut 1 or 2, the recipients of siRNAs and microRNAs in Drosophila, but to the related PV proteins required for transposon regulation and control of repeat induced silencing, such as the suppressor stellate conferred. As a consequence, the repeat associated siRNAs were then renamed to pyRNAs, which then also account for uniquely mapping pyRNAs that are proximal or interspersed within repetitive elements. These pyRNAs were predominantly found in early embryo and adult flies and enriched in testes consistent with the role of repression of transposons in the germline and during early development. So, in summary, because it represents one of the earlier small RNA profiling studies, we were able to discover many new and abundantly expressed microRNAs and showed the regulation, and we recognized the presence of a distinct class of small RNAs originating from repetitive sequences like transposons, which we termed repeat-associated siRNAs and became later known as pyRNAs.